this computer. Okay, <laughs> so we're finally recording. So welcome, Trish. I'm so excited Hi. that you're here um, to be one of the final uh, interviewees as we conclude our therapy month. And like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm learning uh, as well as everybody else is what, what you um, offer for uh, veterans. I was looking a little bit on your guys' uh, website and the therapeutic benefits of these kits that you make. So I'm really excited and hearing more about what you uh, have to offer in helping veterans. Oh, well, thank you. I so appreciate this opportunity and I'm honored that uh, you wanna to talk to me about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we had a social gathering um, for work because I'm still in the military and the army is coming up with this, what's called foundation day. Um, to getting soldiers um, together to talk about how to get better as an organization. And one of the big things was with a lot of the increase in suicide rates uh, that are going on and with soldiers that are isolated and how to help soldiers out. So I think this is perfect timing on how to um, share how we can help our veterans out. So if you could share a little bit what you guys are about, I appreciate it. That would be I would, I would love to. And that's interesting that you were talking about that. I uh, just had a discussion with uh, my volunteer and my coworker this morning that was here uh, about this very thing, because this is something that is also very close to our hearts as well. Uh, so I'm Trish Alger. I'm a craft care specialist with Help Heal Veterans. Uh, we have been offering therapeutic craft kits at no charge to veteran and active duty since 1971. We're coming up on our 50th year, so we're pretty excited about what that means for next year. Something to look forward to in the middle of this pandemic, so that would be great. Um, but also those craft kits that we've been offering are a lot of different varieties. Uh, we have a lot of different materials that are used in them, uh, but they're also free of charge. I mean, we haven't, uh, we don't charge for anything that we do. The veteran, the way we look at it, they have already paid the price for that craft kit. And we have some uh, really great donors uh, that make sure that we can keep doing this. Uh, a lot of private donors. So I always think that's really great mm -hmm. that we have such a large amount of people that want to continue to keep supporting their veterans. Uh, we have a few uh, sponsors as well. Pretty interesting. Everything from Southwest Airlines gives us their seats. And uh, Lazy Boy actually gives us, uh, last year they gave us 200 pallets of their material to keep it out of the landfill. And we turned those into craft kits as well. Oh. So um, yeah, I know, isn't that great? I mean, just I just love that. When we see the material come through, I tell some of the veterans, I'm like, you might find something that matches your couch. <laughs> that would be kind of awesome and a little crazy, but how great that uh, we can do that. But <clears throat> the craft kits that we offer, and actually that's our mission, very simplified uh, getting craft kits into the hands of veterans who want them. That is our, our basic uh, core principle here. Um, I also just myself, Texas, yeah, in Illinois, and then we have care station, uh, could be in uh, possibly a VA or a, a veteran home as well before this pandemic. That's kind of been difficult to make that happen right now. We've also been working though with MWR and so they've been getting some of our craft kits as well to be able to hand out on uh, posts. So that's been helpful. But those uh, craft kits, my goodness, there's just the imagination of the, the craft kits that come, they come up with at headquarters, especially Chip. He's pretty amazing. So he takes his downtime and keeps creating craft kits for us. Everything from bird bird houses, uh, wagon kits that we have. They're so intricate that uh, those can take a while. I mean, you're every single wheel you have to do every spoke on them, uh, so that can take a long time. We've had we had veterans who um, one actually credited our craft kits for keeping him sober for several years before he passed away, and uh, that always just touched my heart to know that he said, "When I wake up in the middle of the night and I couldn't go back to sleep." and I did not want to drink, he said, I would work on this wagon. And he would take weeks to, to even do one of them. And we have five different kinds. And so he would spend weeks on it and researching it, painting it, going into the details. And then we also have craft kits that are very simplified. It might be something as simple as a, a jewelry kit or a, like that birdhouse I was talking about. But then we also have fabric. Uh, we have uh, messenger bag purses. Uh, we have some leather kits as well. Uh, 
things that, to work with beads, paint by number kits. We have a lot of different things that we can offer. Uh, and so talking about that whole isolation, that's been very um, worrisome to us as well. I don't like the numbers of completed suicides either. Uh, we work with our local suicide prevention awareness uh, coordinators and we just worked at a stand down this month as a matter of fact, uh, and also dealing with homeless veterans. So. What happens is it, it helps to keep their mind off of what's going on, first of all, not just around them, but possibly even what's going on inside their own mind that they just can't seem to get out of. That's where we come in when it comes to uh, things like uh, PTSD, uh, because when your mind is engaged on something that your hands are doing, now all of a sudden you've disengaged from the things that you just can't stop inside of your mind. Uh, and then when you come out of making that craft kit and sometimes some of our craft kits they're all different you know uh strengths skills sets for each one of them so you could be something you like our hero band it's a link wristband you could be done in 10 minutes with that and then we have other things like i said that gentleman that took months or weeks to to put a wagon together but you finished something even if it only took you 10 minutes what's the feeling that you get from that right i completed that now, now if i can complete that what else can i do and so that's what we like to see with our veterans is they work their way through our craft kits using their hands, using their minds, um, and, and actually finding some success uh, in something that they do, something to complete. Because what's the, what's, the perp what's the whole thing about the military, right? You have a purpose. Everyone has a job. And so um, when you start feeling like you cannot get your mind in a place to where you understand what your job is anymore or what your purpose is, especially if you have, you know, retired or left the military and you're still trying to work those things out, everyone wants purpose. And so when you work on those things and all of a sudden there's just this sense of self that I did this, I finished this. Um, I'm gonna tell a quick little story when it comes mm -hmm. to those wagons. Those wagons are one of my favorites just because they're, they, they do take some time uh, we're fairly close to the VA here, and we had we have a domiciliary there. Um, and a few years ago, uh, one of the veterans that was there uh, would come over and get craft kits from us. And I remember he came back one time, and he, whoop, I apologize, <laughs> I disabled my phone and still trying to get calls on it. Ah, eh, see, we're busy. Um, so they, uh, he came over, got craft kits from us. And, Cause keep them busy at night and on weekends because they're going through their treatment and things. And so he came back one time and I said, so how did you like your craft kit? And he said, I don't like that wagon. I said, well, okay, I understand. He goes, but you know what? I set it down. I walked away. I didn't throw it on the floor or anything. And I said, well, good. See, that's a good step. And then uh, he just walked around the room looking at the craft kits and he come back up with craft kits. He was going to get, it was another wagon. And I said, oh, you got another wagon. He goes, well, I decided that wasn't going to beat me. By the time that gentleman was out of uh, the domiciliary and heading home, he had done all five of our wagons and made two hybrids out of mixing kits. And I said, look what you did. Look what you did in just a couple months. You brought yourself from this where you didn't even know if you could do another one of these. And now you've done all of this. And so I said, now you have a visual to show you what you can complete. If you really take the time and the effort and just be persistent in getting things done. So again, what does that give you? Because there's self-satisfaction that I can do something. I can complete something. So that's part of what we do. So I just, uh, that to me, obviously this is a job I could talk about forever because I'm just so, uh, excited every time I see what a craft kit can do for a veteran, maybe somebody who didn't even think they were creative, uh, and then try something and then realizes that, oh my goodness, this is something I've needed in my life. You know, something that just seems so simple to maybe the general population. Uh, but then when, uh, it's something that they've never done before, um, it's just a great thing to see that on their face. Wow. And yet a lot of my interviews that I've done uh, this month has been about exploring your artistic, having that pen and paper or paint and just exploring it. But I think that could be a roadblock for some people too, and get a little frustrated. You know, what do I put on paper? What do I do? But I think this kind of gets, like you said, it gives them a project. They can visualize what the end state's going to be and start tinkering and putting things together instead of having 
markers and not knowing what to do. It at least gives them something artistic to, to get the wheels going. Yes, that's what I love. Yes, and that's true. That's We're almost like a jumping off point. I don't expect anybody to be doing our craft kits all of their life, though one of our veterans, she's a uh, Army WAC vet, and she started using our craft kits back in 71 and still does. So I think that's pretty awesome. She always tries out the new stuff and helps other people understand them. But but yeah, she, it's not like that's all she does, obviously, because it is a jumping off point for a lot of people. Uh, if you were to get, say, a pair of her moccasins, uh, the Elks Club donates uh, this awesome leather to us. I did not know this till I read the article. So the Elks Club actually gets deer carcasses from deer hunters in the Midwest donated to them every year. And then they treat the leather and then they use it for projects for veterans. And we get a big portion of that. I think this year we've got most of it and we turn them into moccasins and bags. It's the softest leather I've ever used. But um, so again, something that would have been considered waste, we've turned it into an mm -hmm. awesome project. And, um, but that uh, when you look at those uh, craft kits and you look at the moccasins and uh, I lost my thought there. How did that happen? It just like took off. <laughs> there it went. <laughs> there it went. Catch the next one. Um, so that's one of my favorites is the moccasins just because it's fairly simple. You're just uh, uh, stitching around the outside with basically it's like a shoelace. And so it's mm -hmm. super simple to put together. Also practical. I always tell all my veterans when we get to this time of the year, I'm like, you should have already been making your Christmas gifts, right? I mean, come on. How awesome is that? Yeah. Who doesn't want something that's handed right to you, uh, you know, that they made? I, I always think that's great. Um, but no, you were talking about um, something specific and it had to do with um, doing something. Oh, already done. So that's the yeah. part that I was going to get to. So the moccasins, uh, for an example, all the holes are already punched inside of it. So, and the pieces are all there. The instructions are there. Inside the craft kit, you've got the lacing, uh, the needle that's in there. Uh, you always have everything you need for it. If it's a birdhouse, then a little piece of sandpaper and a little pot of glues inside of there as well. Uh, we try to make it as simple as possible. Because when we started in 71, it was for uh, soldiers inside the hospital bed. So we could actually hand them a kit and they could actually make it while they were in their hospital bed, which is kind of wow. cool too. Cause I know you get bored sitting there forever. Who could, that was probably before you could really even watch a lot on TV. So <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy. Cause I've been in the army 18 years and I've never heard of you guys. Um, I know <laughs> it's like, why have I, why have I not heard of you guys? And I've been on multiple deployments too. Oh, wow. You know? Wow. Uh, you should have. I, I, I just never, I've never, maybe it was advertised at MWR. I, I don't know. I don't ever remember hearing. It's like, oh, I wish I had heard you guys a while ago. Uh, so when we started in 71, we were called Help Hospitalized Veterans. And I think the focus, because it was so much on um, those that were in the hospital and the VAs had used us, and we we're not really big on uh, advertisement. You won't hear us all the time on things. We're, we're trying to work on that a little bit more because what happened several years ago when we rebranded for Help Heal Veterans, uh, our focus is not just those that are in the hospital, but the community of veterans. Uh, so you may find like here in Central Texas, Fort Hood uses our craft kits and Intrepid Spirit and uh, a lot and uh, Darnell uses us in their occupational therapy, things like that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, they we're not like on television and uh, radio or anything that you're going to see us. The VA did do a really nice article on us this year during the pandemic because uh, we created uh, ah, can't even say it quarantine craft kits <laughs> we put together. Yeah, so that was really nice. But yes, I feel the same way. I want everybody to know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you're you know a soldier is hospitalized and they're spending a lot of time in the VA hospital is that something that somebody advertises to them if they're going to be a long-term um, patient or is it something they need to reach out on their own that's a really good question um so here uh our VA near us gets our craft kits they can actually put an order in and have them have them right there available um, and yeah, I believe there are, are people who are inside like the CLC and uh, that will go ahead and, and find craft kits for them. I don't work in this VA, so I'm not quite certain mm -hmm. how, how they do it. But I do know that during this pandemic, I believe we like quadrupled the amount of VAs 
that had asked craft kits from us. Uh, in fact, VAs that had never asked before were doing so. So that was a really good sign that they're actually uh, reaching out for help from us. Um, I know if, if you go on our website, healvets.org, there is an actual map on there where you can look in your area to see if they're available for you. And then you can reach out to them. Like you can see where we are, our community-based clinic is, or if there's possibly somebody else in your area. Uh, you can also uh, join the, the mailing program that we have also on there. Uh, they mail out, I think about three, maybe four times a year, you'll get a handful of craft kits sent to you. You don't get to choose. That's the thing that's nice when you have a craft care specialist with you. You can actually have a choice usually of, of what's available. And we have quite a, quite a good selection. So if you want to try something, that's what I like about this too. It didn't cost you anything to try it. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, it might spark something that you never thought you could do before that you might not be interested in before. Uh, so I think that's that's great. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention, since we're community-based clinic here, uh, we also offer clinics as well. Uh, so during a normal year, I know I hate saying this all the time, but it just seems like mm -hmm. every conversation has to be that way. In a normal year, we have clinics going on is what we call them. So classes that we offer. Right now, we're kind of doing a slow opening with some social distancing, uh, some leather classes, wood burning class, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they can come in and again, no cost. They can learn how to do that. We have uh, knitting and crocheting and looms. We make hats and scarves. Uh, we were at the beginning of this year going to start with Quilts of Valor. They were going to come in, the state representatives in our area, and was going to go ahead and teach how to do that. So we were going to have quilting classes. Uh, we fully expect to be able to do that again soon. Uh, and so it's kind of nice that people who wouldn't normally come out of their homes, because veterans do like stay isolated a lot of times, then they can come in, they're hanging out with like-minded people, learning a new skill. I always tell uh, the first crochet class we ever had, um, I had more men than women, not only a good sign, but I keep telling them, there's nothing wrong with learning a new skill. And there are a lot of men mm -hmm. who have done this. In fact, one of our Vietnam veterans showed up with a lot of projects that he had made, blanket included. So uh, the guys walked over there and took a look and they were kind of impressed <laughs> what he had done but quilting we had more men than women in our quilting class as well wow. I know I always think that's pretty great so uh, yeah and we have a lot of volunteer opportunities too because again they have skill sets you have a skill set that I wouldn't have and to be able to share that with other veterans um, is great that's something that they need to use right have that purpose again and then also be able to share with their fellow veterans yeah, um, no, I think that's great. And what I'm hearing is a common theme is a lot of veterans that are dealing a lot with PTSD and a lot of traumas. They don't want to be, they don't want to continually talking about the scenario, talking about where the trauma came from, you know, and are just are tapped out talking. Um, yeah. And to have this uh, area where they can, it's almost like meditative. They're able to focus their thoughts, get a little more narrow and calm their mind down. And just like the tinkering of, of, of doing something. And you said like the feeling accomplishment and who knows the effects this year has had on even just the, the normal everyday American. And then the ones that are actually um, dealing with a lot of trauma, emotional trauma and chronic pain. Um, so I think it's really great what you're doing as you're doing to help uh, veterans out. Thank you. I, and that's one, of, that's a good point. So we, you know, we have the veterans that we've recognized over time that um, already have a challenging lifestyle themselves, you know, maybe they're by themselves. And so it's hard enough to get out and with the VA closing down classes and meetings and things like that, things they would normally look forward to and then stop by and see us. Um, they haven't had, so it's been isolated, but what really concerned me was when one of our uh, long-term, very stable veterans, I say stable, like his home life, very stable. You know, he has family and friends and a routine and things to do. And, uh, and when he came in recently and shared that his headspace wasn't quite where he wanted it to be, I was then even more concerned because now I'm like, oh, okay, he has advantage of people who support him he has a great system going and 
and yet he also isn't doing very well. Um, then I, got, I became even more concerned about the ones that had those challenges because now I'm like, oh my goodness, now we're talking what? Europe is closing down, things like that are happening. And uh, we, that's what we were kind of doing this morning, kind of strategizing, how are we going to deal with this? Uh, so one of the things we offer is curbside pickup for craft kits too. And I know uh, the, other, uh, the other CBC in Chicago does as well, just to make it easy. So if you're uncomfortable, you know, at least we saw you, we talked to you for a second, but we've handed you your craft kits. You now have something to do. We'll give them several if we need to, just keep them busy for a while before they come back again. But then there's others who need just that little bit of human talking. And, and so sitting outside, like under a gazebo, spaced out, or same thing in our rec room, you know, sitting down, spaced out, drink some coffee, and talk like things are normal again, uh, at least close to normal as you can get, has been helpful. But yeah, that's, that's one of the challenges. How do you make that happen? I was even thinking, how do we do this? Can we do it? online video i mean not like i want to do a zoom call every day with you know 20 veterans that'd be interesting maybe i shouldn't even bring this up <laughs> i don't know what that would turn into but um but yes just trying to figure out if you have a veteran you know or you know someone who's in service now and really needs just check in on them you know check in on them and see how they're doing talk with them give them something to do something small <laughs> Do you guys um, send any kids down into any of the deployed environments? Uh, yes, from what I understand, they do. So um, that would be headquarters that could, could answer okay. that. But from what I understand, yes. I know MWR was one of them they were working through and I'm trying to think who the other ones are. There was a couple other organizations um, that they've gone through as well to send them through. But yes, that would be awesome for, for husbands on deployment. So that's been awesome. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Cause I was deployed for 15 months on one tour. And if I had more crafts to do, I probably wouldn't have been spending as much money shopping <laughs> cause that's all I had to do was <laughs> shop <laughs> and buy stuff that I'm not even using nowadays. So um, right. nice resource. Well, this was a, a great conversation on what you what you do. And we actually have, I know people that are on this page that are based out of the Fort Hood area. It's a couple of people I spoke to that I interviewed oh. with are in this area. So it's kind of, I, I keep uh, getting, Texas keeps coming up in the, in the interviews. So yeah. Great. And any other parting words that you wish to share with somebody watching right now or in the future before we finish up? Yes. Yes. Um, you can, obviously you can go to our webpage, uh, healvets.org and look for information on there. There's everything from pictures of, uh, craft kits from the past and, and currently just kind of get an idea of what we have. You can also, uh, see a lot of what we're up to doing, uh, here locally. Um, we have a Facebook page. Um, I'm actually trying to find somebody who can help me out with that. I mean, I love doing social media usually, but you know, I kind of like to do my job. So <laughs> I need some help with keeping things even more updated. But if you go to Heal, Help Heal Veterans Temple, Texas, uh, then that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on here. It has our, our address on there and everything too. Uh, we're 819 South 5th Street in Temple. We're one street over from the VA on the corner of Avenue I and 5th Street. We're on the bottom floor. We have triple the space we had uh, a few months ago, uh, we just relocated, which was a nice thing during this pandemic. So we have more than enough space to be able to do a lot of things we have planned. Um, I'm looking forward to having a lot more events and a lot more clinics as time goes on here. But if you know a veteran who needs this, please share this with them. That's our whole purpose is trying to get those craft kits into their hands. Um, if you work for a veteran service organization, uh, reach out to us as well. We could either do, uh, headquarters could either ship them to you or if you have a craft care specialist close to you, like where I'm at here, I can actually come and deliver those craft kits to you. So it doesn't matter what size your organization is either. We have some that are fairly small, but really powerful. And they might have 20 people that need craft kits. They'll come and grab 20 to 50 from me uh, every couple of weeks and then hand them out. 
or if you're with an organization that's meeting uh, veterans that are isolated already and shut in and are at risk, uh, please reach out. We'll, we'll get them into your hands too. Like BFW auxiliaries, things like that. They'll come and get craft kits from us and hand them out to them. Uh, I think that's really important. And if they're looking for an opportunity to volunteer, you can obviously do that with us. We're also part of the combined federal campaign this year as well. So if that's uh, you're looking for a charity to give to, uh, we'd be honored if you would choose us. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else, but I think that's about it. <laughs> well, anything else, just, just let, let me know and I'll, I'll add on to the comments of the, the video when I share it out. Um, Thank you. So I'm gonna pause this recording. I'm so happy that you're here and that you share this great, uh, oh. all this information. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just, I'm very, you know, so I, I have been with this organization for three and a half years and, um, and I was ashamed to say that I didn't know who we were before I went in for the job interview. I had not, and my husband's a veteran. I have family who are veterans. So it was like, what, how could I not know about this? Um, but, you know, and I, I'd met like my national advisor and a few other you know, craft care specialists and talk to people on the phone. But when I went to uh, the Craft and Hobby uh, Association's conference in January and met people from our headquarters, my CEO, uh, you know, Chip, who's our production director and a lot of other people that work there. When I met them, our VP, Mike Fisher. So when I met them in person and got to have dinner with them and discuss this organization, I'm even more proud to be working for them because I'm telling you, they have the same heart I do of wanting to serve our veterans, uh, wanting to help them heal in whatever way we can, whether it's physically or emotionally or mentally, whatever it is that they need. Uh, they definitely have a heart for it, every single one of them. And yeah, that just made me... I don't know. It's just nice when you're part of an organization, not nice. It's awesome. When you're part of an organization that all have the same uh, thought processes and how can we do more? Um, just amazing. I appreciate them. Love it. Love it.